so everyone knows the nine classes of Team Fortress 2. I'd hope so. I need you to design me a tenth class. You know, big update, new character. Ooh. Who are you throwing in? Well, you got your long range with Sniper. You got your short range fast with uh, Scout. Scout, yeah. You got your defense class, you know, like heavy, but he's super slow. Very slow. So I would say you either try and mix and match, you know, some of those elements and create one that would be balanced in its own way, but is played differently. Like, I don't know if you've seen this. There are people whose whole goal is to play engineer as Scout. Just shotgun only. They don't put down a turret. They don't put down a teleporter. They just go. My character, the one I'm thinking of, mine would be kind of like Scout, uh, but it's got like three dash moves and then oh. two pistols. Wait a minute. Also the ability to travel through time. Wait a minute. <laughs> and then I'm thinking they have kind of like a distinctive accent, you uh-huh. know, maybe cheerful what, type. What nationality? I would say English, maybe maybe UK. Okay. Just spitball. I mean, I'm just spitballing here. You may be upset to learn that this is already a thing. What? I, I'm sorry to inform you. In what game? Well, uh, it's, it's, yeah, Paladins. <laughs> Stupid. You're probably <laughs> right, though. <laughs> Hey everybody and welcome to Speculation Station. I'm Joseph Thomas here as always with my good buddy Eric Crittenden. Da 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 Getting spicy kinda, with it. Did you not see me coming out from backstage with my hands on my hips? Oh, with my, the smoke and, and the pyrotechnics. And and yeah, two hands on hips, clotheslines on nips. They call me. I'm the new. I'm the new class. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. They call me the wrestler. Well. Thankfully, this isn't a wrestling show. Do you know what kind of show what this kind is? What kind of show? I don't. What, please this tell is, me. This is a show where we take a video game, be it a single oh. title or an entire franchise, and we turn it into a movie. What? It, it, just any movie? Well, not just any movie. Oh, well, let me tell you a little bit about that, because does the number 55 mean anything to you? I think it does. Well, it, it means something to me. It's the Rotten Tomatoes writing we're trying to get on every single movie we create on this show. Not good. Not great. But also not horrible. You know, just a good, slightly above average. Just like, just like, uh... Just like the wrestler's stats. Yeah, in, there we go. <laughs> in the video game Team Fortress 2, which we are talking about today. Yay! Let's assume people know nothing about... Maybe I should take this, because I've actually played this game quite a bit. We'll go, two, are, we'll go two routes here. We'll go two quick routes. So quick I will do quick route number one is I will give you a little look into the world that makes up Team Fortress 2. We got lore, got? and then we're going to talk gameplay. I'm going to leave gameplay to you. I'll take lore. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so lore is it's our Earth, pretty much. We got two, two people, two really old guys, their brothers, who their father was really wealthy and owned, you know, big, big coal, big oil, big energy production. And he splits this up between his two sons, red and blue. Okay. They were like, hey, why didn't I get all of it? They hired mercenaries to okay. do the dirty work to try and basically undermine their sibling and to get access to everything else that they own. And these mercenaries are the characters we play as in the games. Yes? Exactly. The classes, okay. so to speak. So the goal of the other teams or the other sides are to not necessarily beat them, but undermine them. Yeah. So the game itself, uh, the gameplay is your standard, you know, kind of FPS. Uh, you got a bunch of different game modes, uh, capture the flag, or I guess capture the intelligence control point, King of the Hill, all, all the hits, uh, you play as nine, you have nine different classes to select from, uh, these mercenaries, uh, with all sorts of different skills and abilities and stuff like that. And apparently there's a story. According to Joseph, there's a story. None of that's really ever ever brought up. Well, it is brought up in one way that if you're listening to this 
and you're not familiar with Team Fortress 2, the easiest and most enjoyable thing you can do to get familiarized with the story is go to Valve's YouTube page and look at the Meet the Team for Team Fortress 2 videos. That's true. There, there are, are some shorts. Source Filmmaker videos, which is actually the animation software <laughs> developed for, I guess, for Valve itself, uh, that you can go download and make games with. Or make uh, animations with. You can go watch those. Introduces the characters. They each have a good personality. Or I say good as in uh, not... Distinct. Not morally good, but good as in well-created, well-designed. Yeah, very well thought out. And it's very comical. That's the whole thing. So the story... Very comical. As much as I touched on it with the lore, you can kind of push that to the side for a little while. Because what really matters is goofy men fighting Doing goofy things. Well, let me ask you this. Is there an actual... Other, aside from the stuff you set up, is there an actual storyline involving these mercenaries? There are. There are a few. Uh, there was <laughs> there was a comic series for all of things. Yeah. But is there a storyline with a concrete end and a beginning where like no. where it's like it's it's all just we, building up to the point okay. of the game, pretty much. So we basically have free reign. I'm assuming within the basic constraints. Like yeah, I mean, if we really want to go by what is considered canon. Uh, then, you know, certain characters can't die before a certain point kind of deal. Well, not a, I, I wasn't playing on killing any of them. But. <laughs> All right, so that's Team Forges 2. Now let's talk movie. I guess as we usually do, let's start with medium. Obviously, it's a film, but like the style. I get what you're saying. Uh, yeah. So we're talking live action, animation, puppets. 3D you know, that, animation. That's what we're going to define we can do as puppets medium. Again. I, I don't want to do puppets. I say puppets. I don't want to. I don't want to assume too much, but I'm assuming we're both thinking just make it like the animations, right? Yeah, I, I think because I mean it's be already this very distinct art style. This also lets us really kind of get in there when it comes to you know storyline because we got animation, we can get really wacky with it. Oh yeah. Uh, okay. Well, I guess. I mean, I guess I'm ready to crack open this box if you are. Oh, I'm ready to crack open this loot crate with this oh. key that I got. This two dollars and fifty cent key. That I, that I purchased to get one item. Um, okay, where do we start then? Well, we, we're talking about medium. I think we should go to genre next. What are we What are we thinking our main genre is going to be? I, I, I don't think family movie, obviously. But I no. also don't think horror or, you know, like right. a thriller or something. I mean, action comedy. Action comedy? Action comedy is right there. All right. Action and comedy. And you add a hyphen, and you get action comedy. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. You want me to keep explaining how, the, how this works? <laughs> I think I get it. I think. Uh, we can also do, I don't know if this is a genre necessarily, a little espionage. Because, you know, these are, we're not trying to defeat the other team. We're trying to undermine the other team. So Right. You know, because you do in this world, action. no matter how many times you kill so-and-so, they can always come back. Right. And we probably, so these mercenary in-game... The, I don't know how it is in lore. The mercenaries are like the same people. Like, yeah. you know, you have the same nine classes on blue and then the same nine classes on red. That obviously is not going to fly. Nope. And, uh, well, and you can have repeats of the same exact thing. In, in the animations itself, they do a good job of never having... If they're showcasing one character on one side, they don't show a duplicate on well, the other. Well, meet the spy... Oh, uh, that's Red true. and blue spy look exactly the same and sound exactly the same. That is true. That is 100%. But they're they're not on screen at the same time, though. Well, I mean, yeah, but it's... <laughs> I mean... That's, that's arguable to person. not be intentional. That's just... Yeah. I get that part. But, okay. I mean, do we... I mean, I I don't necessarily say we, we can't have it be the same people on both sides. Well, my idea is we set up the mercenaries as, I wouldn't say necessarily the best of the best in their in their fields. But they're not. They're yeah. unique in their fields. And so right. that's what brings them out. I just like they showed up. They're, they're the only ones who there. actually showed up to it. Another interesting thing we can toy with is mm. the designs for the characters changed multiple times over the development of the game. Well, yeah, that's true. There were versions of the characters that look very different. They're still in the style, but they're very different than what the final designs look like. Right. I think we could definitely bring in some of those to be the counters to the mercenaries if we choose to do that. We could also just have them be faceless. Yeah. Yeah, you have you have soldiers that have helmets over their eyes, but by their jawline you can tell they're not the same as our right. soldier. Another yeah. route we could go 
is uh, Man vs. Machine. Ooh. Where they fight machine versions of themselves. That definitely could work. And I believe it, I don't know how lore works, but the you know, you're on the red team and the robots are blue. So I don't know. Well, it, I, in the commercial for it, it's both red and blue and they turn and there's a bunch of robots. And it's just like, oh, okay. we got to work together now. So I, I, I get, I think the color is strictly just differentiation for that game mode. Okay. Rather so than not actually the, the implying. Blue, the blue guy. Yeah, the blue man the does not and make the, the robots as far as, as, okay. far as we know. Uh, remind me again, what does red do and what does blue do? Uh, it's, I believe it's both coal or oil or something. So they both do the same thing? Something old money, you know? Okay. Because it you. was their father's... Oh, no, it was gravel. It's not a joke. It was gravel. <laughs> gravel. Yep. So it was... Old money because they haven't gotten any new money. <laughs> <laughs> so they both inherited that, which gravel makes it fortune. so much better that they're fighting over gravel. Um, right. You know, like a gravel plant. This is a, re- this is a real I- thing, people. Should we figure out just, like, overarching story? Or should we go ahead and just, like, kind of work out the main the main story first? I think we can go like with overarching. I think we can okay. we can kind of, and then we, we step back. Because this one's going to be not as focused on, I think, the characters progressing and growing. Unless we really do want to go with a Valve route where, like, you know, in the, uh, what was it, expiration date, you know? They actually yeah. have this whole thing where it's like, oh, they're put in a really tough situation. But at that point, you already know the characters. We're going to assume that we don't, that these people don't know the characters, you know, right? I mean, we could do the very classic ensemble cast where they're all put together and they have to learn to work together. But we that, could do that, a spin on it where yeah. they still work bad together. I think that could be the growth. They're all kind of brought together here to face the threat of the other old man. All right, and I, li- I like the idea you said earlier. They're not the cream of the crop. They're not the worst of the worst. They showed up. <laughs> right. They need the money. <laughs> We could separate, if you want to go, out of the many options we we put down for the other side, quote-unquote, which I yeah. think should be blue. Is, yeah, red versus red is blue. Usually, yeah, red is usually the good guy in the Valve cartoons. Well, well the lead. The lead, we'll say that much. The, the, sorry, the focus, yeah. I should say. Um, I think we could go with the faceless route, where it's just an army of... Fate, like you said, so we see a bunch of soldiers' helmets over their eyes, but they got, you know, it's not our soldier. Yeah. Stuff like that. Anyway, so so I think we could have red, the red guy be, like, kind of worse than the blue guy in some ways. That's why he has this way, quote-unquote, worse army. I, I, I think guess lower that would quality. actually be really interesting. Like, you, you, So I, I think I get where you're going. We divide up the mercenaries yeah. between the two of them. That's we, not where I was going at all. Really? <laughs> No, I was really? saying we have the nine guys on red, and the blue is just a bunch of faceless guys reminiscent of the other classes. What I'm thinking is if we divide them up between red we and have blue, four, four on red, five on blue, or something. We get like we get a more distinct rivalry. So obviously, we're trying to get the image that they work better together as an entire team, as all uh, nine of them working together. But yeah, I think if we divide them up, we can kind of play towards the man versus machine route. And we could have it be where, you know, not maybe, maybe the first half-ish is the understanding of these two, you know, rich guys hiring people, you know, to fight. And we get to see a lot of that. And then by the second half, bigger threat. So, we, okay. I'm cool with that. And then that, that would really create tension. It's like, okay, well, now they're having to work together. We could say that is, is kind of a bigger goal thing. You know, it's instead of money, it's like now that. protecting their own lives. And that means that they would not want to work together because they were obviously just fighting each other minutes ago. Right. In the in the lore, where do the robots come from? Space. I don't, I really? really don't know. I did not find too much information about that. They are there. I they could have, they could be to... made by one of the guys. And well, yeah. I'm. I mean, it wouldn't really make sense to have it be made by one of the guys and then have them team up. Right. Because obviously, whichever one's on the well, side. Unless we go the stu- <laughs> unless we go the stupid rogue robot route, you know, where it's like oh, I made them to do this. It's, nope, they're gonna do something else. Oh, that's not what I wanted them to do. This, we could do secret third brother, <laughs> secret third brother, or we could do announcer. We could, do- we could have announcer be the bad, or we could do have dad be alive. That ooh, with an army of robots. I don't know how much that breaks the lore, but I think a re- I, I think a reboot is definitely in order for that because uh, I'm completely fine with that. But since we don't know where the robots come from, 
That's the best we got. Here's here's my idea. Tweak it as much as you like. Lay it down. Introduce red. Introduce mm, five mercenaries on red. Sure. Introduce blue. Introduce yeah. four mercenaries on blue. He didn't get as many. Show faceless variants of the other ones, you know, and, and not like a huge, huge army here, but enough to where it's like these skirmishes, because it's not warfare as much as it is espionage. So the fact that you have right. these different teams, you know, supposedly, and we showcase kind of the intended way, I think with the faceless mercenaries, we can showcase the intended way that they're meant to be utilized. So you have the faceless snipers, you know, up in the thing, actually doing their job, you know, sniping. And then you have the faceless spies sneaking around and stuff. As where, right. when we see our people, they're doing things a little unconventionally. It's not right. so much soldier, like... Soldier, you have all the soldiers shooting rockets, the other soldiers rocket jumping. Right. Like, and, and we can keep their personalities from... Yeah the original media of course. and have them be just absolutely ridiculous. Like, you know, spy is extremely cocky and, and that's why he is, you know, quote unquote better than the other ones. He's using his abilities and his cleverness. And then you've got scout who's just fast, you know, he's just faster than the other foot soldiers, you know, or whatever. We have these, you know, like you said, this very traditional kind of way of fighting with these distinct characters and then the robots show up and then maybe the, everyone else gets obliterated by the robots, but our nine guys because of their different way of thinking about it uh uh survive yeah definitely I don't know if that would make much sense but maybe no it could it could definitely make sense if we if we do it in the way where say the other people we're not assuming first of all we could say that all of the faceless including our own mercenaries uh did, did not expect this to happen this was not on their contract this was not the idea we could have a point b where you know, some of them just straight up leave. They're like, ah, I'm not dealing with this. You know, some of them start getting killed. And some of them are like, nope, nope, I'm not dealing with the robots. I'm leaving. We could imply that our mercenaries on either sides literally are the guys who are like, I'm not, like, really going to do anything else. I need this money. So I'm sticking <laughs> okay. around. You make it more of a, <laughs> they fight the robots out of desperation of being well, unemployed. Yeah, because if they, I mean, <laughs> who cares about the robots if we fulfill our contract, you know? You know what could be really fun? I'm imagining first third, you know, we're introducing our characters. They get hired. They start fighting. Like, after that first third, the robots come in. So the robots come in pretty early. Okay. And, you know, then we have the moment where they're like, you know, like you said, all the mercenaries leave. They're like, I'm not getting paid enough for this. And then we have our, our nine stick to, st not stick together necessarily, but stay because they need the money. And then, you know, one of them was like, we got to complete our contract. And then they realized the contract wasn't to defeat the other team. The contract was to, like, steal the briefcase or something like that. So kind of adjacent to the robots, they, they work together to try to complete both contracts so they could get the money and leave. <laughs> I actually really like that idea in the comedy of it. It'd be like... Yeah, like, I, they're not I trying to be heroes. See, I could easily see a spy character who basically could say, look, if we both want the money... We're after the same thing. You know, it's like, it's like, right. does it really we'll matter if we get paid and we get to go home and leave these robots without, you know, we, we don't have to mess with this if we just get paid and leave. Yeah, like they don't care about the robots. The robots are just in the way. Yeah. I like that. I think that, I think that's fun. Let's talk additional characters real quick because there okay. are a couple. I was, I was very hoping you would say that. We've got, I think, uh, the first, first one that probably comes to mind for a lot of people who are TF2 uh -oh. veterans is Saxon Hale. Big Australian guy, kind of a Chuck Norris legend type. Yeah. Based on what we have right now, I'm hesitant to put him in any specific spot. I'm not really sure where he could fit. He could definitely fit somewhere. We've got announcer. Uh, announcer. The uh, the British woman, I believe. The old woman. The old lady. She, now, she's an actual character. Though. Yeah, she's not she, just and like she, a does have, she does have lore to her connected to the brothers. Ooh. So I don't know. What is, I don't know if what is it, it was a, a a rivalry shared love interest thing, or if maybe I just pulled that out of my rear. But uh, it, 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 it could does. Be. It is. It is a reason to explain why she helps and hurts both sides. You know what I mean? Right. I don't think she should be a necessarily super uh, uh, prominent character, but I think we could have her in the background. She definitely, if she exists, she has to use a PA system at some point. Well, I was thinking almost exclusively. 
I just had this idea of she, I mean, she's not a secretary, but I'm imagining just like this dark room, you know, she's in this speaking. Or she's talking to, let's say she's talking to the red brother, right? Yeah. And he's giving him order, giving her orders and stuff. And she, you know, she goes, talks into the microphone, gives orders to the red guys. Then she turns to her right, walks through the door, the blue brothers. <laughs> she talks to the blue. <laughs> that would be actually beautiful. Because that would so be they're just, perfect. They're like, the same building. Like maybe they don't even know it. Or maybe it's, it is their father's building or something. And, right, and they just, you, yeah. they just have divided it half. We, okay, we yeah, like she walks she across the, the like a bridge of the father, you know. Yeah, I like that. She walks across the bridge of like because the house is just divided with like a five foot gap. <laughs> I really like that, and they're both that's overlooking, funny. you know, everything that's kind of happening. But but they can't see each other, right? Oh, they don't want to see each other. Okay, who else do we have? Uh, what was her name? Was it Miss Pauling? Yeah, Pauling. I believe. She's she's another one of those characters. She's got a purple shirt, you know, so it implies that she's not necessarily on one side or the other. We could right. actually introduce her as an assistant to the announcer, which I I think is lore correct. I could be wrong. I'm probably wrong. It works wrong. though. It but works. We could though. say that. We could say she is the assistant to the secretary, you know. Yeah. Kind of one of those position under a position. Give her a, a little bit more of a prominent role in comparison to the announcer. Right, and I mean, in the expiration date thing, she was a love interest for Scout, so I don't know if you want to bring that back. I'm, we could. I I'm think perfectly fine fun with that, it. yeah. We haven't had a good love story. Not that this is a love story, but we haven't really had much romance in our game. I don't, I don't think we have to have too much. I think we give it the same level of comedic, you know, right. heart, heartwarming, uh, gory comedy, I guess. Okay, sweet. So should we should we go ahead and start working on the, the structure then? Oh, yeah. Let's go back okay. to the beginning. All right, now should we should we do a little flashback action or should we just start present day? I think ooh, I think a flashback would be important for the sense of setting up the brother story specifically. We don't have to necessarily do it for anybody right. else, but we set up the brother story. We set up deathbed of Papa. Although he's not going to die though. Well, his how else is he going to give his inheritance? You get what I'm saying. I'm not saying he's Wait, actually dead. Wait, is he dead. dead or is he on his deathbed? Uh, in the actual in lore, I believe he died. But well, we, let's can keep him on his we can change We can keep him on his deathbed, yeah. and then we can, quote unquote, kill him, so that the feud, because this feud's been going on for years. Well, with would the, the two feud brothers. ever start? Would the would the actual fighting start if the dad was alive still? I like the idea of making the father a surprise return. Okay, so you want to you want him to die? I want him to quote unquote begin- die. Quote unquote. Yeah. And, and it could be like this whole thing. Even if he was alive, we could still do it because it's just the division of inheritance giving it up. But I think him dying is a little easier to swallow as far as here's the inheritance. I love both of my sons or, right. or, or the other option. You're both idiots. I hate you both, but I'm giving you equal. You know, I think, yeah, I think the announcer should be working for the dad the whole time. Okay. Oh, I like that. Yeah. And that, I mean, I don't think Pauline would know about that no, either. No, so she's she kind wouldn't. of blindsided. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So I'm I'm imagining, you know, lightning flashing over the house. It's the middle of the night. You know, raining. On the deathbed. Yeah. I think I think you know we could use a lot of imagery of having the brothers be like on one ones on each side of the bed, like that very divisive <laughs> I like that. stuff. We could even have. Okay, I don't know if you remember Tim Burton or not Tim Burton. Uh, it was Batman Forever. It was when Tim Burton left, and they had Two Face, and the way they designed that was. Everything in that set was half and half. Right. I kind of. I don't think it should be that. Well, well then in that case, we just make it purple. We kind of make things. Not until to... he dies. Not until he dies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, when he's there, it's per- It's kind of you know. Nor. Uh, yeah. oh, okay, I get what you're saying. Where it's just kind of they themselves have split up the room yeah. in their well, own if we wanna, way. If we want to break down the house in the middle, like we said, which I think we should. I think that's funny. <laughs> that I think that should be like literally like the dad is in the dead center of the house. <laughs> it's like, yeah, like the master bedroom would be at the bottom or, yeah, or in the exactly. on the second floor in the center with a big window. Very center. Yeah, yeah, like you have a window in the middle of the house and you can look in on the deathbed. And then maybe That's instead like of we're crossing turn. a bridge, we could have that. You know how a lot of old uh, European style mansions have like a uh, two sets of, or a big staircase in the center and then it splits off. And, you know, it's kind of the landing yeah. goes back. We could have that. And we could have it to be where it's just two sure. sides of the house. And it's just this huge manor with two turrets, you know, two towers pretty much on the sides. Like we see yeah. in those old style mansions. So the, the you know, west wing is uh, for right and the east wing is for blue. 
Right, yeah. And so at this and point it, yeah. in time, the master bedroom is located dead in the center at the top of the stairs, big center. double the doors. Dad, the dad's bed is in the center. Yeah. Now, do they know that they're getting split, the inheritance split, or is that revealed now? I think that beginning? should be revealed now. This is So we're going to see them a little younger. This is going to be before they get all old and, and actually completely, you know. I think they should still be pretty darn old. Oh, yeah, but like middle age, not like, you know. Oh, no, I was saying this happens like a month before present day. Oh, no, I don't like that idea. You know? We want the, we want the revelation of the father being alive to be a big thing. But we also want to showcase, when we showcase our mercenaries coming in, I like the idea of this had been going on for years and neither side has been successful. And so they've gone through so many faceless mercenaries. Why, yeah, why are they just hiring these, these guys then? Because other people died. Oh, okay, that's fine. <laughs> I know that sounds stupid, but it's like, that's the literally, you know, it's, it's fruitless. And so... Well, okay, yeah. I was, I was going to say real quick, what if instead of having these faceless kind of professional like straight lace mercenaries which we still can't have some of them what if it's like we they've been fighting for so long that all that's left to fight is like crappy people so like you just have a bunch of like slobs sitting in the waiting room waiting to get recruited <laughs> I like that uh, that would be why we get people you know like we could say, like, spy is somebody who's been around for a while because he seems competent. But then you've got people like, you know, Demo Man. It's like, how how would he be yeah. in the position where he is? And, like, I would imagine Scout's pretty new to oh, this mercenary. Oh, definitely. young, business. too. So that would... Yeah, first day. Yeah. He's still got that spirit. But, I, well, I think everyone's going to be new. Not not to mercenary in specifically, but new to this right. red-blue thing. I think, I think Scout's going to be... Scout's brand new. Yeah. I, I mean, I, so, I, I feel like, like soldier. Soldier is obviously a soldier. One character at least familiar with yeah. this, or at least not even that they're familiar with it from experience, but they're familiar with it from research. And I like that being well, spy. I think because I, think, I feel like spy I was going to say know. medic. Oh, medic. Oh, because think maybe medic has not been on the battlefield before. <laughs> maybe he's only been behind it. Maybe I don't know. I've I've been trying. I've been thinking in the back of my head. I've been thinking about medic. Because he's the one who like invents the way to like return to life, right? Yeah, in the in the lore Which, for man versus machine, right? And yeah. obviously that's gonna be what the dad used, assuming he actually died. So I'm just trying to think of a way to link the two with medic, link, or link the dad and this whole feud with the medic. Because I imagine if anyone's familiar, I mean, it's gonna be the guy. The easiest way to divide up nine is to take one out. We could have medic. We, we could have medic be. Somebody who is with the family, you know, before. Yeah, like he could be the dad's medic. Like just straight, he just got fired because he's dad's. The dad's dead. Well, well, I guess they didn't just get fired, but maybe he's just been kind of drifting. He worked for the dad for an extended period. Dad got sick. Nothing helped, and we could still say that the medic is is kind of lost it. He's he's not really supposed to be doing the job he's given. Well, he's well, he's crazy. He's crazy, right? So we could say that maybe he was demoted so much to the point where this is a huge manor. Like, this is this is a big, wealthy family. So yeah. when he's demoted, he doesn't necessarily get fired. He just gets put, you know, okay, now he's working in some kind of infirmary, you know. Or Actually, you know, to go back to what you said, I, I do like the divide four by four. He can just be a medic for one of the one of the teams. And then, you know, when, when, when the robots come, that's where he decides to, not really take up arms necessarily, but to you know to, to right. join he comes the fight. Up, he brings out his his inventions. Yeah. You know, he brings out his. He's like, if there was ever a time to try out untested medicine, it would be it would be now. <laughs> I like that. What what have we got to lose? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're gonna die anyway. I've already lost my medical license. I, um, I know that's a running gag within it, but I want to bring that in. I want to bring the whole thing of like yeah, sure. anytime he's doing work on somebody, you just get this sense of unease, like. This is my only option, but I don't like it. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I think I think when we're first introduced to medic, you know, he's in the infirmary tent. I don't know the scout or whoever's talking to him. He's just like brutally, like quote unquote, he like, he's like chopping off limbs and stuff. <laughs> I like, like I like using the kind not, of not even that he's like trying to be mean. It's just like it's like if you're in a factory like chopping pork, he just like doesn't care. He's just like doing this. Here's here's an idea. Method. Here's an expansion yeah. of that. What if we showcase that healing device? So like, he's got he's got 
you know, shrapnel. Scout's got shrapnel in him. He's got, you know, his, his, as far as his face goes, it's the cartoony, you know, oh, I got the big black eye and the, you know, bandages on my head. Right. And, and but his body's like mutilated. And we showcase the healing gun. And we can yeah. even have Scout ask, he's like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. You know, what, what else does it do? Does it bring people back from the dead? And we could be like, no, it doesn't, like, kind of. It zooms in, zooms on on the medic, and he says, in theory. In the- well, yeah, yeah. Some- It'd be something where we're like, but no, it can't, you know, sadly we haven't proven it. And then he could, like, literally put his hand over, and you've got, like, a pile of dead bodies. He'd be like, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> you know? In theory. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I, th- I think. I- <laughs> If he's more of a traditional doc, maybe whoever's in charge, not the the red, but I guess like the, whoever's in charge of the infirmary has like forbid him from using that medicine. Yeah, I think we so can maybe, create, you know, we can create some characters that are going to be unique. Yes. So Scout is healed like under the table, so to speak. And then, and well, we then can even have it be you know, that the doctors, the doctors for the family are not meant to be in the conflict. Not at all. Right. But medic is just so, he, he has such a desire to do that work, even though he's literally been banned from it, but he's still a part of the family. Because you know how, well, I don't what, know if, you, yeah, what if it, this makes sense to you, but you know, wealthy families, it's like if they've had a butler for several years, they'll keep members of that butler's family in their right. household. Yeah. But even though they're technically servants, they don't do anything because they're not good at it. And so you've got Medic, who's, Wait, are you who's saying already he's still, been, he's still he's already been in the household. Family? Like, no, he was working for the father. We can, oh, we can okay, even say that he got fired from that or demoted and so he's working in the household because it's a wealthy family they're gonna have unnecessary things like doctors and stuff i think he should still be working in the infirmary like of the battlefield though maybe not just so not, our characters not, he's, know not that he's supposed to be though i like that idea so that way we, we he's, show he's not around. on either side so he then he's going he's helping either side but he's not even supposed to be doing that that's okay i like that yeah what what if the because he, he almost whatever. could be kind of the in where he gets to talk with one side, and then he gets to talk with the other. Yeah, and he's doing something mean. He's not doing medical work. I think he's doing, like, he's, he's like their their dishwasher or something. <laughs> for for the actual house, yeah. And then on the right. on the battlefield, where he's not supposed he to be, out. he's actually healing yeah. people, but doing it in such a horrifying way. In a ve- just like a bad way. It works. I think the, whatever the gun is that, you know, heal the, with the beam that the medic uses... I think that should be reserved for like the family, you know, like, like he's not supposed to have one. So maybe, you know, scouts really bad off. And, and, and so the medic maybe sneak ones out, sneaks one out of the house and heals the scout with it. Yeah. So he can have it for later. Cause you know, I, I'm just saying if we're going through all these mercenaries. Yeah. Yeah. To get this low quality, you know, they need to be diet off. <laughs> I love- and I think we save Uber charge for, for the end. We can, oh, we can, sure. you know, obviously set it up yeah we i think we set up medic is not supposed to be where he is he is because he just has the desire to do that right he's not good at it but he can do it and it does work it well no i'm talking about like healing people it works enough to get them back out fighting or maybe he just sends them off when they're hurt like he slaps a bandage on their messy leg and he's like all right get back out there I think then we could set up the point of like well you're you're a doctor isn't there something you could do it's like oh not for this i'd need you know the type of whatever you know, and he, and he calls it whatever it is. The gun, not with these tools. And he has like a he has a hammer, <laughs> like it's <That's> all he <laughs> has. <laughs> I like that because then and then it would also showcase that for whatever reason at this point in time we could really get them into some some shady situations and have them get healed enough to still be alive, you know. And that way we yeah, don't exactly. kill off any of our main mercenaries. We can kill off other people. We can kill off the faceless guys. Yeah, hey, I don't care about them. Yeah. So I think, you know, like we said, we start with the dad dying. And then I think I think we should do like a, like almost an informational video that they're like they're watching in the rating room to, to be recruited, you know, this kind of introduce us to the to the conflict. I like that. And it's got it's got the the similar style, you know, the sting and then it's the the kind yeah. of the PSA style, you know. Yeah, like a like a twenties, nineteen twenties announcer. Yeah. Well, then we could also imply that that's been since this feud has been going on for a while, at least. I mean, we're not gonna say like you know hundreds of years or even you know ten years, but it's been going like on for a decade, while. Yeah, that maybe. the video is old and parts of it are like obviously like oh we see a lot better mercenaries in the video we see right. Well, you see the idea. Yeah. And then we cut to the waiting room, 
I think it would be funny if it's the same waiting room for both sides, just like different color. One side is red, one side is black. Exactly. Maybe, yeah, Scout walks in and he, he's like not sure. You know, he's like walking back and forth, unsure which side to sit down on. <laughs> I, I like that as a gag. I think that'd be actually really funny. Maybe, maybe we could even have it where he goes into blue and he's about to join blue and then just like, but then heavy comes and kind of pushes him aside, just sits down. Right, and Scout's knocked over to Red, and they're, 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 the the Red recruiter's like, all right, you, come on in. Scout's like, wait, wait. <laughs> but he goes. I like, I really like the idea. I don't know how well it sits with the, the fans, but I really like the idea of this just all taking place. Like, there's just this, the, the factories, you know, the, the processing plants for the gravel. Right. Are behind the house in this huge piece of land, this wasteland. Sure. With the manor smack dab in the middle, and a lot of the stuff that is center line is just in single buildings that are split down the half. It yeah, just shows it's, it's, they, it's all they, this, I mean, it would make sense. Yeah, because these siblings really want the whole wealth. They're not going to leave it because if they leave it, the other person's going to take it. it. So right. they're just staking their claim right where they are. Yeah, I like that. That's funny. So everyone's using like the same, yeah. Like we can really go like hard with it. Like the, uh, <laughs> Like the wep- the armory is just divided by like a pane of glass or something. <laughs> I mean, should we go ahead and divide who's on it, which color? Yeah, I think we're going to focus a little more on red. Yeah, so we can have the less fleshed out characters on blue. I think Scout on red, Heavy on blue. Mm-hmm. Pyro on blue. Uh, Pyro on blue. I think Demo Man on red. Okay. Engineer on blue. I Yeah, I'm okay with that <laughs> actually. I'm okay with Why that. Why not? Because uh-huh. I think we want Spy on red. And soldier, and so soldier, soldier spy which, demo, and um, and it would make sense for demo and soldier yeah. to be on the same one, uh, right? Because they're kind of friends in the lore. And then blue, you're gonna have engineer, pyro, uh, heavy, and sniper, and sniper. Yeah, I like that. So they get recruited, and you know, I think I I would say since he's new, we're gonna follow Scout's perspective. Yeah, for quite a, they, probably most of the movie. Not all the movie. You know, like, like, I think we're going to have scenes divided between him, Miss Pauline, and the blue team. Especially since we're giving him a love interest in the same way that Expiration Date did. Right. I think he's going to be the lead, but yeah. not the only lead. No. I mean, he's going to have more screen time than the other. Yeah. But it's also going to be shared between him, Scout, or excuse me, him, uh, Soldier, Demo, and Spy on the red. He, he's the closest <laughs> in for the audience because the audience isn't going to understand this. And people who have been around for a little longer, we could say that characters, like I said, like Spy's been around for a little longer. Uh, you know, we could even say Soldier's been around for a little longer in, in this. Well, I think Soldier would be new, but he's a soldier. So, like, he doesn't understand how to be a mercenary. Oh, I like that. He doesn't too, understand yeah. that. He doesn't understand, like, the espionage part of it. <laughs> it could be, yeah, it's like. It's like, okay, I'll rush in there, and I'll get this, and I'll come in, I'll bring you it back. See a like, rocket launch, you see a rocket launch? I will get there like faster blow. than the rest of you. <laughs> right. And then for Blue, I I don't even know if we'd have a... There's not really a good perspective character in Blue. I guess Engineer, if we had to pick one. I feel like the others are too caricatured. No, I think... Well, Heavy's got... Heavy's got enough... Yeah, well, Heavy's too stern in the animations. He's never... I mean, we could just follow the four of them as a group. Yeah, I think that'd be like fun. they just kind of stick. They stick together. Well, and we could even showcase kind of a a different aspect. Not to say that they're better than Red or worse than Red, but they they focus on how they're trying to go about their goals a little differently. Partially because of the people are different. You know, it's like well, they just have a different skill set. Right. Exactly. And I think our characters throughout this first act of battle should cross paths. You know, Spy uh, uh, throws the thing on Ingy's dispenser. Yeah. You know, uh, or a century or whatever, yeah, or what a, the sapper, yeah. You know, so Pyro shoots back one of soldiers, right? You know, just so we're already, you know, showing that they kind of have this animosity. That then, when we bring them together, it's going to be kind of, uh, uh, you know, kind of satisfying. Oh yeah, well, and it also for anybody who's a fan who's played the game, they'll see these things and say, "Oh yeah, hate when that happens. I love when that happens." You know. And, it, and it, it's right. good action. It's good action. And the game is designed yeah. well enough for that, You have heavy shooting at Scout, but Scout's running too fast. Yeah. You know, stuff like that. Sniper shoots Demo in the head. You know, all that good stuff. <laughs> just kid just kills Demo, man. So, yeah, I think we're just setting up... The first act, we're just setting up these eight slash nine characters. You know, we, we have them visit medics. We show medics on both sides. 
both sides. Yeah. Excuse me. I think we're gonna cut between Scout, the blue team, and like Miss Pauline with the brothers. I really like this idea of there's an understanding, almost a sport like understanding. Obviously, they're gonna kill each other. Like that's the goal. Like to them, right. the goal is we gotta kill the other people. And maybe we can bring back what you said earlier, where the actual contract is the whole espionage thing. But it's like you yeah, get the briefcase for or, how or whatever. long all of these other people have been fighting and how long this has been going on. It's the the side of it's been lost, and so it's almost like at first there's no sense of as it's like war. It's just like there's really a, yeah, there's a bad sports, war. There's a sportsmanship to it yeah. where like, uh, you know, it, the soldiers or heavies trying to shoot soldier and soldiers you know rocket jumping heavies. Carved through these screams, like come down other, and fight like men. These other guys and soldiers, like ah ha ha, you cannot hit me. <laughs> it, you know, it, yeah, just like this kind of not camaraderie necessarily, but, uh, but enough to say that when they do team up later, it's not completely unbelievable. Yeah, they're not going to be like really hostile. No, not at all. I mean, they're in it for the money, and so the money's the first focus. So when it gets right down to it, we could say they find that uh, loophole in the contract. They're like, right. we can still get our money. Yeah. I'm just trying to outline this out of my mind. You have the first third, uh, you know, they're fighting mercenaries. Classic TF2. Yeah. Kind of. We, you know, we introduce their moves. We introduce Scout meets Medic. Uh, you know, he's hurt. And like, we kind of outlined that. We have that scene uh, where we kind of learn about what Medic's up to. We learn, we learn uh, about the technology. We learn about the tech. We see a little bit of what Blue's going through, mainly just to introduce these four characters. Yeah. Uh, uh, we show some of Pauline up at the house. And then I think the robots hit, you know, just kind of out of nowhere. I think it'd be something where, you know how in the actual game mode, it's this big machine in the background, like this big, almost big Jawa sand thing. crawler looking thing. Right. You know, loads up, I, comes up, rolls up over ask, the hill. Let me ask you this. Let, if we skip ahead a little bit, should Blue and Red reconcile, or should the ending be things go back to quote-unquote normal? Oh, well, definitely go back to normal. All but right. I think maybe our mercenaries could could, could maybe leave for better things, potentially. Yeah. We'll leave that up in the air, maybe. Here's a funny way that we could end it. It yeah. would be, you know, they've, they've completed their contracts, they got the money. The robots were dealt with kind of as a side effect of that. I think I like that idea. Um, I don't think the brothers should know that it's the father who's behind it. I almost think that the father should do it kind of. Well, if the brothers don't know, then what's the point of bringing the father back? Because he's like, I, they're feuding over this. You know, it's like he, he, maybe he's really upset about it and his goal is to get to them. But the mercenaries stop because then why would, if, if they found out that their father was alive, did this thing, right? Right. I think that would affect them a little bit. I, I know they're, they're stereotypes. So I think if we're going to go back to normal, I don't want them to reconcile. We need the old bait and switch, you know. We think they're going to reconcile. He comes back, he says, there was a there, there was a, a misprint in the will. And, you know, they think, oh, I'm going to get, you know, they're both oh, thinking, oh, I'm going to get we, all of what it. What if it was literally it was like, he gets the east side, you get right, the yeah, west exactly. side. Exactly, it's just the, it's just the opposite of what they've had. Uh, um, I, I think, though, the robot should serve some kind of purpose more maliciously. What's that? Because right now we have it where if he's coming back and he shows up, what is his reason for showing up? Is the reason to show up to stop the fighting? I think the reason is just, I think the goal of the robots, I think the the big ship should have the dad inside of it. And the goal is just to get to the house for the robot. So he can tell the sons there was a misprint in the will. Okay, what if we literally have it then where it's like they see this and they start firing on it? And then that's when the robot's kind of in a self-defense mode. In the games, the robots don't really care about you that much. Like they just kind of march. They go to their they go to their objective to their point. Right. So I th yeah. I mean obviously it's going to be quite a distance, but uh, you know I th I think it's just like you can pick them off, but they're just going to keep coming. Okay, I like that then, because then that that's not only referential to the game, but it makes sense. It's like they're not they're robots, they're machines. They don't have really malicious intent. Yeah. I think I think the robots should still also look like the mercenaries. I think that would be yeah. Well, maybe not as direct, but you know, you could have the big one that looks like the heavy, the 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 pyro kind of thing. Yeah. Not what not where it's like an actual just clone of the the sniper <laughs> or whatever. Uh, 
And I think the reason the robots exist is, you know, the father has seen the fighting and he's like, all right, I need you to get me to the house safely. So it's more of an escort, really. Yeah, because we could say that the fighting is like not just in one part. It's like all around this land. It's all right. over yeah. it. Like all the maps. Yeah. You know, we, and we can obviously have the buildings kind of sh- be the maps in some places. I like that. Well, now that we're not making the father villainous, which I right. think we could do. I think that's still an option on the table. I don't think possibly. we need to, though. I don't think we need to either. But it does mean that there's no real reason for the announcer uh, to keep secrets from Pauline. That's a that's a good point. Then I, I don't think the announcer would still be working for the dad. Because otherwise, I feel like if she told the red and blue, they would just be like, all right, stop the fight and let dad come. So I don't think she... Well, unless, once again, unless we make the dad have villainous villainous intent. I I like the idea of him coming back and just, like, switching their sides. That's definitely good for comedy. Like, it's just... It also is very not complicated. That's true. Because we don't want to add this whole thing. Okay, so then the announcer's just kind of working between the two. Uh, I think, yeah, I think... think, What if... What if the announcer is the villain? How would the announcer be? I, I don't think we need a villain, but keep talking. Well, if she's working on both sides and she understands both sides, what if her goal is to sabotage both and obtain it for herself? Because if she's, wor- like she's com- working on both sides, it. not if we explain it in kind of a Disney villain fashion where it's just like, you know, we see her working on both sides and she vents her frustration to Pauline and Pauline's just kind of doing it because once again, it's a job. But the announcer's like, I've been, you know, this was not what I originally was hired on to do. You know, it's like the father was here. It, you know, I mean, she could even say like, oh, if the father was here, things would be so much better. And kind of a so what's fake the purpose of her? That. Why is she doing the announcer stuff then? Because it's her job. People do things. If they're hired on by a family, if they're hired on by a family, and that family is paying them, paying them good enough money where they don't have to worry about doing anything else, they'll keep doing it. That doesn't mean I just they don't won't think be we more need greedy. A vi- we don't need a villain. We have antagonists. We don't need a villain, though. I think it would be good to have a villain, but I will side with you on this and say we will we will design it without you're a villain. To make a ca- you're welcome to make a case for one. I'm just not – the first – the announcer one was not very convinced. It did not convince the jury. There's not too many other ca- – we'd have to create a character as a villain for that, and that I feel like would be a little harder. I'm not I opposed could- for the announcer being a villain. I just don't – you just need, you just need a better argument. you got to convince the jury. Okay, my idea – this is my raw idea that I'm going to try and yeah. make sound better now. Slam that raw idea down, dog. We introduced the announcer as a villain, like I said, in kind of a Disney-esque way. Very simple. Very just like, she's she's doing this because it was what was in the will. It was in the will for her to work for the company. The company has now been split in twain. So therefore, she still has to work for both sides. And they have her doing this, you know, kind of over the intercom work. And it's not what she wants to do, obviously, but also she just wants to not have to worry about this feud or this worry ever again. So she'll end it and bloodily if she has to. I just don't understand how doing that leads to her getting control of the gravel. (laughs) The gravel. Uh, The estate, I think is the better way to word that. The estate, sure. I'd say when when you have idiots, it's easier to manipulate idiots. When you have well-trained soldiers and well-trained people, it's harder to manipulate them. Her goal could strictly be manipulation. How does that get her the estate? Because then she can use them against the brothers. What does that mean? Kill. She kills. Death. She just Murder. kills. But she, she can't. Them execute. Them? Well, she can't do it. She can't. She can't go and just kill them. Well, then why would she want idiots to kill them? Wouldn't she want because highly trained be, assassins? Because then it wouldn't look like her fault, and she could inherit it. I have a way to fix this if you'd like, because I the jury is unconvinced. She has proof that she is actually the daughter of the old man. Oh, you lost me. She she is the she is a a, a, a third a third child. She sends Pauline out to the bi- battlefield to secure the the proof. It's somewhere out there, you know, and that's how Pauline comes across the the team. Uh, eventually, the dad reaches the house right to give the will, and then you know. The announcer walks up to him. She's like, recognize me, father. He says, no, you're not my child. I only had two. It's a, she didn't, she wasn't actually the child. I think we, we changed that around just a little bit. If, sure, if we're yeah, going to well, keep that idea. Fix it up for me. Um, what if instead of her being a child in her mind, she just knows that she's in the will? And we could even have it to be where maybe the father dies before he gets to 
to give up the estate. And so it's up to the courts to do it. And since there's two sons of equal age, they just split it down the middle. And so then when the father comes back, he does, you know, he announces, he says, ah, I do have my will. I do have what I intend to give. And then it's literally yeah. just the, it's, that would be the funny part is it's the swap of what the law did. You know, and he could be frustrated. He'd be like, I can't believe the law did this to me. They did me wrong. You know, that. and he's like, you were supposed to get the east side. You were supposed to get the west side. You know, and it could be she Switch thinks, you know, side. she says, well, what about me? You know, I've been working for this family for, you know, our, our family has been working here for generations. He could be like, who are you again? <laughs> you know, just like the sense of she's looking for the evidence or they could it could be this hunt for the will from them. And it could be in several different places within the estate. And that, once again, why Pauline would have to be sent out across the entire land to look for it and would require the help of other It's in people. the guest house, which is on the opposite side. Oh, I like, I like that. Estate. I like a guest whatever, house. Whatever. I like the idea of there being a guest house and it's the same principle. It's just a half and half house. And like the mercenaries, not that the mercenaries would stay there, but it would just be like, it's a, well, it would be like a peaceful thing or it'd be like, you know, they're in it and it's just split down the middle. They're just sitting on the couch watching TV and across the room, there's another couch, you know, different color, another TV. Yeah. It's the, it's the break room. Yeah. The only reason I would say do the daughter thing over yours uh -huh. is because, like, both sons are still alive. So just in terms of inheritance, that wouldn't make sense. If the announcer is older than the brothers and she believes that she is the daughter okay, the child, then uh, she can, would we be, can, obviously, we can the do oldest that, child. Then. It does make sense, yeah. Because then if she says, yeah, I'd be the oldest, and also, you know, since my, my mother worked with your father, you know really closely as a secretary that could also be that influence too right where she just is full-on believing it's just like uh, it's got to be how it is i mean again let me say i don't think there needs to be a villain but if we have if if you say we must have a villain i do think there needs to be intention because if there is intention where you have somebody trying to underhand, you know, do this and, and could even actively be getting frustrated over time as she's not finding the will, as she's not getting this stuff. And then it accumulates in the end where the father does show back up. That ties all the loose ends together at once. But it does create this buildup in the beginning where you think, is she going to do something? Is she going to be the one that causes this? And you could even build it up where she could be talking about, like, for example, since the family is what owns the technology with the, the gun that the medic uses and all that. She could even, we could even think like, oh, is it that family? Is it her? You know, is she, is she just going to try and take it by force or whatever? And then it reveals it's yeah. the father. Once again, the thing is just full of bait and switches, which I think we're not overusing. I think it's actually hilarious that we have so many of these because it's just the wacky nature of the games and the story within the games is to be like, hey, you know that thing that you're used to, like Abraham Lincoln? Yeah, he's a really buff wrestler. You know, or whatever. <laughs> I don't love it, but I'm fine with it. It works. Okay. I, I, I'm fine with it, too. I think it's unnecessary, but if you think we need it, I'm cool with it. Look. All right, well, let's talk Let's talk. Scout and Pauline, because we kind of got off track. We, we did. We got. We would say that we pushed, the, uh, we pushed the cart the wrong way. You could say that, or just a different way. Because uh, we're always moving forward here on Speculation Station. This train only goes one direction, <laughs> which is forward. Um, I think I do like the idea of the guest house. I think that's where they should all be. You know, Scout is obviously head over heels. Pauline is not impressed. Yeah. And I don't think she ever will be um, impressed. Well, we got, like at the end of the expiration date, we show some attraction, but we don't show impressed. We yeah. show like she thinks he's cute, you know, but yeah, he, he thinks he'll, he'll work. Yeah, <laughs> he'll work. He'll do. I think, honestly, the second act, you know, when the robots come up, they beat Pauline. You have a little bit of the survival. Like, they're just trying. I mean, they should have a goal. Maybe they see all the other mercenaries leaving, so they're just trying to escape. Yeah, I think, well, the first, I think the first idea could be they, they see this and everybody's panicking. Nobody's fighting each other anymore. And so they're all finding different places to hide. And we could even have it so that the, the big, you know, ship carrying all these robots, the big tanker or whatever it is, kind of starts like actually wreaking havoc and not intentionally so just like it's getting through right. the battlefield we could even have it to where maybe it destroys that guest house on its way in it rolls over it rolls over it. right yeah. and so then that kind of creates this other that would be that would be 
a quick way to end the suspicion of uh, the announcer. But it would also be this, you know, route of like, oh my goodness, like this thing is actually deadly. And so everybody is panicking. And I think that's when you would have them all meet up. And it would be this hostility at first, like, I, but also what is there left to do? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying we have that for, I, I think for a while it's just survival and then, you know, they're all trying to leave and then Spy's like, wait, 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 let's leave, but let's be rich. Yeah, it's like, wait, 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 why, yeah, why would we leave without getting paid? So and there's going to be two you goals. Can even have, you could even have Scout be like thinking like, oh man, if I could, just, you know, I got to take the money, we could steal the money, you know, and maybe suggest that like to the Spy or something and the Spy could straight up say, you know, no, it's too sealed, it takes, you know, it takes the like right. thumbprint or something of one of them to open or whatever, and we'd never be able to to get to it. Whatever reason you want to give, yeah, we could come up with a much better reason. But then it's like uh, we have to be paid by them, you know. So we, we're gonna have two goals, you know, the goal of the red and the goal of the blue that now they're working together on. I think one you have the briefcase, yeah, you know, very T forces. Should the other one be a? The other one should literally payload? be a bomb. I think that'd be hilarious. Yeah, the payload bomb. Yeah. They got to escort it. All right, yeah. So they're working together. You know, we don't have to flush this out too much. They're lear learning how to work as a team. And we could, you know, throw in some stuff like dispensers, teleporters, and then, you know, rocket jumps. All, all the all the TF2 stuff. Yeah. We could find fun ways to use them. Because we, uh, we also want, as they're working together, we use the different way that the classes are used in tandem. You know, I, right. as somebody who has never played it competitively in any way, but has watched so many videos talking about how you're supposed to play it, uh, you get to see really cool things that you would never encounter in a match. Right. Uh, and then I think, well, I think they need to end up at the house at one point. Okay. And towards the end. Are you talking you know, about just the main the manor? Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe they just go to get paid. Maybe that's what, that's all it is. And this oh, is obviously yeah, they're like destroying like the hordes monster, of robots. The robots are still coming up. I think we do that survival part, and then they realize like it's just endless. Like that's when they realize they're like, eh, it's no, eh, it's no point, right. no use. So it's more just clearing a path than necessarily killing the robots. Yeah. I think. I think they have three missions. So they have the briefcase, they have the bomb, and then I think when it rolls over the guest house, you know, somehow the will gets like inside. Or not the whatever the proof of the birth certificate or whatever that is the proof of the ambassador or excuse me that is the proof of the <laughs> announcer. announcer yeah um I think that somehow ends up in that big car so they gotta sneak through it oh okay so then it, just because otherwise we're not gonna see a bunch of we're not gonna see too much spy stuff what we if, have, you know oh, he disguises I as think the robot. that would be a real easy thing to do is it would yeah. be Maybe the announcer just calls them out, like right, like so they come, they try to get into the house. And they're like, okay, we fulfilled our contract, we gotta get paid. And she stops them, and she's like, you, you won't be able to see them without my permission. You have to do something for me. <laughs> Why else would they go in there and do it other than Pauline? Because I feel like all the other, I feel like Scout's the only one who's gonna go do that with Pauline. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, I didn't. So think I think about the other guys would have. Well, to maybe be maybe Paul maybe Pauline says you can't get in there without me, just so they don't have to go to the house and then go back. It's not that big. I don't think it's that big of a that big of a thing. Well, it's, it's going to take the better part of an hour for the robots to roll to roll over there. It's going to be yeah, pretty damn big. Yeah, but we can big. imply that it's a really slow roll. Like these guys can outrun it by a long shot, you know. Cuz that's how it is in the in the thing with the waves. It's like you can you can get back and forth across the map faster than most of the robots. I mean, there's the special ones, of course. Um plus we can still we can also utilize the whole teleporter thing and make more sense, you know, they go there they talk and then they go back because then if Pauline's the one to say, what's her other than being literally. Well, the cause it's her job that, and she, she can't do it without him. So she's got to lie to him. Ah, okay. So manipulation. What was the, what is the most highly secured and highly defended spot in the entire state? It's going to be the house, right? Sure. Yeah. Cause they don't, they don't want like any of the mercenaries turning on them and, you know, trying to kill them. Right. So, you know, I'm imagining turrets, and like you said, it's going to be these two spires. It's hard to get into. You can't just get in there. Now, Pauline, she's got something. Maybe it's a biometric thing where she can disable them. So she says, you know, there's no other way you get into the house <laughs> unless you do I'm what I I'm going to fix will. it. I'm going to fix it. What you said, fix you make it, a good point. Up. What if it's something a little more primitive? Because this is not... The technology The technology is fantasy more than it is The reason I want with biometric is because otherwise they could steal it. Mm -mm. It's not that. She what has the authority. To, to the announcer. <laughs> she says, sit down, turrets. No, no, no. Like, she could call up the announcer. And the announcer's 
going to be able to control that because the announcer has control over it. And so, you know, they can't mimic her voice. They can't use her information. So she is still the key. But what if instead of it being just her, it's, it's like a big wall. So that way, if they all go to that thing and then it approaches the house, or whatever, again, yeah, whatever. it just busts through the house. So it kind of kills two birds with one stone in the end. Or not bust the, through the house, the, but bust wait, through the wall. You're saying the ship busts through the wall? Yeah. And I think it busts through the house also. A little bit, because that's how that's it the, opens up and then he walks out. Right, right. Or we, he wheelchairs comes out. the bedroom, oh. split down the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. That works. All right. Okay. I still want her to lie, so we have that act two where Scout's like, you lied to me. She's like, I had to. What would they lie about, though? I don't know. Maybe maybe it would be even the, maybe her goal. But maybe you she lies have, to him about gotta, her goal in the beginning. Well, yeah, you just got to have that act two downturn one way or another. Either the team splits up or Pauline lies to Scout, or whatever you want it to be. I think it's the sense. I think I like the idea where you're saying she basically convinces them because she, the wall goes up. Like, let's say when the thing starts approaching, that wall goes up. Now there's no way back into the manor. You know, there's no way you can't get in. And so she says, I'm the only one, you know, who can call up the announcer and tell her to tell her to take it down so we can get in, you know. Well, that let me let me add one one quick tweet. Because then that's not a lie. So that's be, like straight up. That's just reality. That's the truth. <laughs> that's reality, baby. They meet Polly at the guest house, right? They see the thing get taken up. I think I don't think Pauline goes with them to do the other goals. I think they meet up with her later, and you know she's trying to do it on her own, so she can't, and she realizes she needs help. Just because otherwise, I feel like she'd mention it from the beginning. Yeah. And then, eh, feels a little checklisty. All right, let's go through. I mean, let's works. go through the points real quick, and then we'll see how we feel. We'll wrap coming it up. back to that point, right? Okay. What you got? So we're at the beginning. We introduce the father. Yeah. Uh, we introduce the sons. Father dies before he gets to give father dies. the will. Uh, daughter. Right. The law does not recognize announcer as a daughter. Something happens. Something yeah. happens. Yeah. But divides the house equally. Oh, he coughed blood on the contra- on the will. <laughs> we can't see it. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah. So they don't believe that the announcer is the rightful owner, as she believes. That's the present yeah. day. There's the feud going on. We see the recruits. We get the recruits in. Um. We slowly see the announcer. I think the announcer would express to Pauline kind of in private her, you know, oh, this should all be mine, you know, all right. this. She's like, oh, you want to raise? Uh, you got to, you know, tempt her, tempt her with money. It's all about money. Yeah. Gets her in. So now Pauline's out of the battlefield, uh, kind of in between all this. So not, you know, we don't see her right yeah. away, but she's in there. And then we see. Right. I don't think she, yeah, I think we show her leaving. And then the next time we see her is at the guest house. Yeah. When, when the robots Because she's skilled up. enough to get across the battlefield without. Yeah, she, she, um, she can have a helmet on. She did have a helmet on. What, she did it at one point. I'm sure she's worn a helmet. <laughs> um, I think we showcase the guest house as, as not just a guest house, but like... Well, yeah, guest house, yeah. Kind of like... Big. We, we could almost say... I know this is going to sound weird. We could almost say that it's a... Uh, maybe it was the, the getaway house for the father. And we could also we can imply or whatever. I, I yeah. like the idea. You of can it, have it be it that maybe a it's the servants' house, quarters, like it being called the summer house, but it's literally just across the field. Like I like that idea getaway, of the joke of it's what like, is a getaway house? You've never seen a getaway house? Yeah. So so we're showing our guys fighting. We're kind of split up between Pauline, uh, red team, blue team, and then you know the medics kind of in and out as he is. They all kind of unite. At the guest house, or excuse me, the summer house. Maybe they're fighting still, and the robots show up. Kind of, their priorities change, <laughs> and all of a sudden they're about to survive. Maybe they like defend the the house, or you know, you could have a fun scene like that. Yeah, they defend the guest house until the the things like right on top of it, and it could be like that they started. So, for instance, when she's yeah. Well, maybe they kill the robots and the soldier's like, we got them all, boys. And then the car just rolls over the house. I like that. I like also <laughs> the thing of what when she's looking for this in the house, say that there's like a part, like there's a yeah. storage room or an attic or something. Uh, an addict? An attic. How do you say <laughs> attic. that? There's a, there's a crack <laughs> attic. There's scratching them. And there's like a bunch of boxes. She gets Scout to help her. And that could be the initial lie. Would be what are you doing out here? You know, he starts to get to know her. He thinks he's he thinks he's fresh. He thinks he's getting cool. Wait, and does she's she, just, what does she her, lie about her again? To me, well, why she's out there, what she's doing? Because you would think it doesn't really matter to Scout, but she's not going to know that. She's going to think, well, I don't want 
if this is something that the announcer is telling me to do, I'm not going to pass it. I'm just saying, yeah. look for this. Look for a briefcase. Look for this. She's not going to tell him the whole situation. Sure. And I think we can even not expand a, that. Not, not really a lie. That wouldn't hurt Scout that much, so we can expand it more. And we could say it's, you well, know. Well, maybe you could just have him overreact. She, he's like, you, you lied to me. She's like, no, I no, I just didn't tell you the truth. And he's like, that's lying. Yeah, yeah. Because that would be within just his personality. Yeah. Right. Um. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I think I think they see it, you know. So we just have that visual, like, oh, that's what it looks like when the car somehow, or excuse me, I see, the ship. We keep, I keep calling it the car. I mean, the it's ship a, it's crashes like a tank, through the house, for lack of a better term. Yeah. Since they're up so high, somehow it gets sucked in. Whatever like, you want to call it. I I think the better option, as weird as it sounds, would be what yeah. if at the top of it there's like a hatch thing. Uh. The top of the the, the ship. The top of the ship. There's like a hatch, like a submarine, and there's like a okay. a, a robot that sticks his head out, all uh you know Phantom Menace droid style, and right. the paper when the house gets hit, the paper blows up, you know, like the whole the thing gets destroyed. You see the paper, you see the edge of it, and you know in in animation fashion, you're way too close, and you can see it says birth certificate, and then it says the announcer's name or whatever, and it just and it blows, blows through the hatch. It blows up and hits the robot on the hatch in the face, and he goes wah, and he falls down into it. With the thing right. with, alongside him, I think okay, that's because then they know it's in there. They don't know where or what condition yeah. it's in. Because we don't we don't want the 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 robots to care about the briefcase. Yeah, no, not at or all. The, the, the will or birth certificate. They don't. Okay, they, they'd have no reason to. It just it's just there now, and that's the only way to get it. You know. Yeah. So Paul, you know, Pauline obviously wants to get in the ship. You know, I think she tries to convince them to go with her, but. You know, I think Spy is going to kind of take the reins here and be like, no, 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 we could complete our contracts and get paid. And then I think Polly would go try by herself before she would rally them to help later. Well, I think she would try by herself, but Scout's definitely going to follow. I think Scout would be torn. I think because we want Scout with the team, I think, just for just. Oh, for the mission. So he's with. I think the best way to to set up that progression to not pause it, to not have, you know, somebody leaving in the middle of it. I think it would be to separate Scout pretty early on and maybe showcase difficulty on certain tasks we without can't. the yeah, Scout. And I think that would also lead into the thing of like when we see them earlier when they're when he's finally getting better at it, you know, he's doing things right. And then you have the thing or soldiers, you know, trying to push the cart. What is it? The scout actually pushes the cart faster is like the stat. Uh I think so. Yeah. yeah. And so like the like thing is like people. soldiers just really struggling. He's like, ah, two. Uh, cannot push, you know, need more help or whatever. Well, I mean, that that's fine. Just what are, what are Scout and Pauline going to be doing? That's a good point, because why would, yeah, the others would want to come back. I don't know, having, well, having Pauline just like, help them with the tasks seems counterintuitive, but it might also solve the issue of of that, because the reason why Well, the I only feel reason like, I don't want Pauline to help because I feel like that would be antithetical to her goal. Yeah, and, I, and we don't have enough time to build her up enough to say, like, she would realize right. that one goal would help the other kind of thing. Right, so, yeah. So, yeah, I get what I you're saying. I think she would just leave, and then I think Scout's really torn. If you're saying that we set it up to where she doesn't tell them that she has the ability to get through that until later, why would the other ones go with Scout? Because the... No, no, no. They're going with or Scout's going with them to do the the side missions to complete their contract. Right, right. So when does Pauline say I have the 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 key to once, get in? Once they're headed towards the house, they come across Pauline again, and she's had no luck. Or because wh- what's going to keep them? So for example, if they see that wall go up and they know that they can't get through that wall, are they going to just say, "Well, we're just going to accept our fate and what, die"? Hey, how about, then? What if Pauline? What if Pauline comes to them? You know, they blow up the bomb. It's really big explosion, very clear. Pauline's had no luck. She says, "All right, there's. I only know one group of people who are still alive and or here." 